Welcome back to PCM Yeti. It's episode 68, Torino Adriatico. Now I've been going on for a little while. It's overlapped into now a third episode, but we've only had one full episode on it. They've all been on a little bit on the shorter side, but sometimes you've got to just go all in, and that's what we're doing for this race. And we find ourselves all over the top 10. We are second and third overall, sixth overall, 12th overall. We've won a stage. We've come very close to a second stage. And today, with two stages remaining, is the best opportunity to potentially get one more. This is the kind of profile that definitely fits team our team's strengths and kind of one of those best ways to, uh, to get through on the game. The front group is really starting to split up. you got six riders that are off the back, but it looks like Bora has a couple support riders trying to get in there and uh, help a leader. Who is that? Germani's oh, punchy. Few punchy guys, but Sombrero is the one they're leading out there. That that is a lot of strength. Uh, he's 18th overall and in the break, and you know incredible quality. <laughs> Vanderpool, Tahada, Zana. Like, wow, it's like Peloton, not really breakaway. 60k to go. Uh, we've really got to keep an eye on that group, and uh, we're gonna have to commit a little bit early we've got two circuits left uh, to the finish of what we essentially just ran with just three short climbs climbs that are intense enough though to really split things up the, the great news for us is that the breakaway group isn't cooperating very well anymore and attacking each other uh, which is going to make it more possible to pull them back but as UAE is doing that work for now I'm happy to have UAE do the work. Jumbo Visma has also done work for a lot of time today, which is weakening those two teams to give us a better opportunity to maybe get some sort of result today. But like I said, it's going to take it's going to take an earlier move to make it happen. Ton is shrinking, front group is shrinking, but the gap to the front 13 for the moment is not coming down. And they are still together because they're still just E1. So only one rider has now been dropped out of what was the 19 away. Making, you know, a third group solo guy. Gap not coming down. Rope. We catch the one rider. It's a Bora rider, so it was a domestique. Now we're seeing an attack at the front. It's down to 12 of 13. 31k. And the gap is steady really thinking it's i mean i'm holding fine at 78 effort gap is starting to come down okay gap is starting to come down 25k this is good it's going to take the pressure off of me just a little bit another rider dropped off that chase group is really the one collapsing though not the front group the front group's the, the one we need so to catch but at 240 I need to go now. I mean, with that descent coming, and if we have any chance of catching that front group today, let me check something. Siabra at 355 is the closest one in that group, so I don't necessarily need to go crazy to catch them. It just means that the stage win is gone, and we focus on the GC, which we're not going to win because the number one overall so I kind of uh, kind of want to have a go anyway all right here we go 21 kilometers left Derek G coming through pushing it out Peloton is shrinking by the way down to 139 down to 70 big split right there 68 99 effort from G for a moment I don't need to decimate my whole team let him uh, handle this and not a lot of red bar in those behind him and no splits so I suppose we might as well just keep that part going 18k a couple of teams another have split up front they obviously don't have anybody in the break down to group. 217 overall Siabra was the closest time. at 355 so uh, again no GC threat They're, they've lost one rider at the front just two 
are left of the trailing group, and now just 66 left of the uh, peloton as G continues to do the work. Just two little hills the rest of the way. I don't think we're going to see any major split. It's starting to feel a little too late for that. And obviously the uh, front group. Too much quality. Hoggins attacking. G is nearly done onto a uh, Zipinati. There's now just 10 kilometers yeah, he, he just took care of half of those kilometers for us. So Zipinati putting a good little acceleration in here. Let's get on to uh, Ponomar. Van Art batters in Ghana, Hershey, Pagacher. We easily counter that. Peloton begins to thin down to 58. G's out the back. Ponomar back in front in control, 8K. Under two minutes behind, so GC is no longer under threat. The and I've set guys up path. well. I've got uh, five ahead with 6K to go. Mathieu van der Poel goes on to the attack. Van der Poel attacking the front group. Ponomar giving me that 99 with four and a half. Hold on, hold on, gel. Too late to get Zipanati back in the mix. And that's it for Ponomar. 4.4k Haddad. Yes. Let's get Ponomar out of the way. Let Haddad take over. Still 14 riders off the front. There's no way we're going to catch them now. Minute 45. Haddad's already done. 3k Montez. Montez to take over. Set up Hagland and Abdullah, the main guys for the day. 2k out. Still going to see if we can't get some sort of... It's 11 guys left at the, off the front and a two-minute advantage as we get inside the last kilometer for Hagland to lead out Abdullah. Chris victory. Harper wins he the stage. Not who himself. you think it would be. Velasco the and then Hagita. So a couple surprises. Tejada, Siabra, Cavallo. 600 meters, Abdullah. Can we get any separation here? It's 58 chasing 11. They had a minute and a half advantage. Vanderpool wasn't that. No, Vanderpool was in that group, wasn't he? 11th of 11. Pagacher still beats us anyway. We would have been second and third with Abdullah and Hagland. Would there not have been a break? I suppose that helps us keep a couple seconds willpower. closer. But yeah, 55 riders left. Effort. No separation of any kind there. Uh, but it does set up the final stage and puts us in that very strong GC position. Disappointing on the stage, but we wouldn't won anyway. Pegatcher still had us beat. So Siabra moves up to 11th, but Abdullah drops just the one position with no changes in the top 20 otherwise. Final stage is a time trial, but it's a, it's a glorified prologue. It's barely 10K. Uh, and I have to micromanage the last few riders it's gonna be a little bit tricky to get just There's right because out it's the box you want an 87 push get up to speed quickly but then you cannot maintain that speed all the way to the end so you set an 86 now that's gonna get you close to the end but in that final kilometer we may have to tweak things depending on the rider's ratings uh, abdullah prologues a 70 today so he's you know maybe a 69 with the time trial being a little bit lower uh, but you can see how we're definitely nowhere near recovering what we need to recover just yet as Montez gets ready to set off but plus four for Abdullah is uh, right in line with the sh what he should have it's actually a minus one draw compared to what he should have uh, Tiberi just went top and he's just finished so it's going to be a pretty competitive time from him Montez getting ready now oh terrible draw for Montez he's supposed to have a plus five it's looking like he's got a zero maybe a plus one but yeah it's a zero wow awful draw for montez that's gonna hurt his position i mean he's not a terrible time trialist but with a 68 70 so you know maybe 68.3 68.4 average between them that t is what i'm talking about the micromanage abdullah uh just go 99 now you got no energy so push on Two minutes down. Really poor time for somebody who sits 13th overall. Haddad's about to set off. Oh, gosh. His prologue's a 59 base. Uh, he's not going to be on the podium after this. Hagland. Where are these guys' ratings at? At least Hagland's got a plus 
two on a 76 base. That's that's pretty good. Okay, had to add a roll down to that 86 territory. Montez is already positive on his balance. Hagland up to speed, up to speed, up to speed, and 86. Okay, looking pretty good. Montez. Not a good time trial, so 135th, well, 51 seconds down already. Had to add in a little bit worse shape. Poor prologue. We're going to have to roll an 85 part of the way for him. Montez can push on at an 87 late on. Had adds already recovered, so up to an 86. As he crosses the line, a <laughs> minute 13 down, 162nd. Hagelin, much better time. But that's still 28 seconds down. Like, that's how far off we are compared to the rest of this field. Okay, Montez pushing on. Final meters, minute 49 down. Not a great time. G was 50 seconds down. Ponmar was a minute three down. Haddad. Haglin. Haglin's passing Haddad. Okay, we will focus on Haglin now. Down to an 86. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He kept burning faster even though we dropped it back down to an 86. 81st, minute down. Uh, 99 for that last pedal stroke. 237 down. Uh, a minute's a lot better, but it's not, you know, Pagacho was just 32 seconds down, so clearly he's hanging on to the win. It's more about how far are we going to drop? Are we going to have anybody on the podium any longer? To Barry, Coke, and Van Art for the stage. Philippe Ogana just fifth. Swan Craig Anderson just sixth. Disappointing for those two. Pagatcher wins. Haglin hangs on to second. Buitrago up onto the podium. Pool, Uchil Brooks. Haddad keeps seventh. Montez is tenth. It's a good points haul. It's a very good points haul. It's not a win overall, but it's a very good points haul. Uh, we got one victory in Torino Adriatico, which means the snowball's rolling right so we're uh overall great race really went the way we want it to uh, but let's get into the next it's milano Sanremo. if i were a leader i would take a nap on this race there's one climb uh, and then through the final couple of towns as g goes down the the auto will be back soon enough the they're all back up on their feet to uh, protecting Shaw. Actually, you know, it's almost time for water. We'll have G do it. There's a couple little climbs at the end, otherwise it's a simple sprint day. It's just absurdly long. I have brought a really strong team for this race. And they do have decent race day conditions. A lot of guys are on fitness peaks right now because of other objectives surrounding this one. Uh, it's a pretty good opportunity for us, and Shaw does have a plus four, our best guy. So maybe just maybe. Of course, there's as a monument, it's you know it's brought all the favorites. Uh, it's gonna be difficult to beat them, but this is that kind of profile that I tend to do a little bit better with. Doesn't mean we're gonna win, but I think we at least could be competitive for this race. We'll see uh, if we can at least score some good points. If not, surprise. But into that final bit, 57k to go now. Let's get water one final time, and we'll have uh, our slow man Haddad do it. And as they have ramped up the pace, and they're starting to put the uh, sprinters under pressure, they just speed up to hold the position a little bit, and there's no breakaway anymore. 43k to go. There's a new breakaway. I'm going as late as they are, and you never know. They might have a chance. First riders getting dropped out of the peloton. Probably riders that had been in the breakaway earlier today. Here we go, 30k to go. As we go up the Cipressa. 85's holding, but not by a great margin. So let's hold on a little bit tighter. 89 effort. No breakaway anymore, they were caught. 26k. A little bit of burnout here, but we're going to be over the top. And we need to recover on the descent. We the need that red bar back. Meaning that an attack is highly unlikely. Go. Got it back in all the leaders. And the domestiques. 
Okay, so now we can speed up to get in position for the final run-in. Uh, we're seeing some splits at the front, though. Some from crashes, mostly just from splits in the pace. 112 left at the front. So, yeah, 17K. Let's get Haddad to gel now. He's going to be at the front in just a moment. Okay, a little lift in pace. This is time. This is time to go. It's early, but... Dad, Hagland, they're going to handle that climb for us. And then you get into uh, G and Zayats, who are going to offer us really good pace. And then Lind. And then two sprinters. Pickroll and Shaw. Now, if they can make it over the top of this climb and be positioned near the front, this this could be a pretty good result, but you're going to see a lot of what we're seeing right now, is which is attacks, counterattacks. It's making it difficult. Uh, we're missing some teammates. Freeze. Okay, Zayat's coming through. Good. You don't need to break away here. This is more about having something, being well positioned and having something for the end. Uh, Haitoza, Bovin, Mohoric, Milan. Well positioned and going for it. Gee, don't want to attack, don't want to attack. I kind of want to hit the top, or just about hit the top, and then accelerate. The sprinters are positioning themselves Haglins up front. cover those guys It'll off. Be a mass sprint and Pickerel and Shaw do not have much in the tank. So Haglin to keep it going. 6.9k, gels. Milan's right there, so we're going to have to put him under pressure. Shaw, pick roll. Good to go. Lind, good to go. Hagland has separation. And G's starting from 4K out. The pack has On just reeled in the escape group. Hag Hagland. They're following you. Haglin, follow Shaw. There you go. These guys were cheating. Uh, 2K out, Lind. And it's too early for Milan. He is not going to win, but Pedersen and Ghana are coming on strong. They're going to be difficult to beat, but we're in a very good position. Uh, I'm going to make sure Lind peels out of the way here. Pick roll. Pick roll. There you go. Shaw. Come on, Shaw. It's going to just miss the podium. Good really good race. Anye, Brennan, Patterson, Matawe, Shaw gets fifth. Hagland, seventh. After all that, following his way in. Pick roll, ninth. Great it's points. Had to add 14th. Uh, like, like I mentioned, we don't have that raw pace that's quite good enough to compete with just the quality of sprinters around. But the profile for Milano San Remo is such that if you get yourself well positioned, you can span the top of the standings with all but one rider in the top 25. It's too soon for the Milano San Remo points to be included, but we're rolling right into the next race, so. Uh, clean opportunities to check on points are few and far between with such a busy calendar but following Torino, Adriatico and Perry Nice we find ourselves all the way up in sixth place comfortably the top continental pro team with 2400 points already on the season and, and this is what I'm talking about I mean once you have this world tour calendar the points that are out there we've secured one win so far I mean you know it's not like we're having a bad season there but all I'm doing is just getting consistent high results comparatively to the other continental continental pro teams and so we're you know well ahead doubling just about anyway doubling the points of uscatel uscade and equipo current pharma and um, archaea i mean archaea's only got a thousand points at this stage and their team like they were so close to world tour uh we were definitely closer this year uh, as well but it just goes to show. And, you know, the Milano-San Remo points haven't even been counted yet. So 
that's going to be a pretty decent haul of points as well with what was it five riders in the top 14 that is going to do it for this episode though we're not really competing with a uae or sudal quick step at this day well really just uae they're well ahead uh, a lot of points pigatcher himself already has over a thousand almeida Sivakov. yeah they've got quality we don't need to compete with those guys though we just need to easily take that top spot to maintain we may or may not make world tour next season and obviously that's going to be the next goal the last landmark in the meantime we want to snowball as much as possible so we have a bigger better pool of riders available to us with a higher popularity and hopefully some good training ratings with some of those nations as we go along of course we seem to be rolling in that cat a's and it was very clear from the comments a couple episodes back that firmly under the belief that as soon as i exhaust the like world tour a's we can get the world tour bc wins if we continue getting victories right lesser levels can be collected at a higher level if the list is exhausted so we we will certainly do that if that situation arises there's still a couple two three more wins to go on on cat a's along the way but it's literally all about world tour from this point on and eventually we'll get that world tour ranking ourselves besides the signing period i think right now the biggest thing for us to watch out for uh during this season besides how much snowballing we can do is going to be just how good of a pay bump can we get from our sponsor with uh, a ridiculously high sponsor rating Rouge de Pain still upcoming. Uh, still no feedback on Il Lombardia either. Uh, and of course, that 15 wins. We've got a long ways to go with just two right now. But, you know, 93.79 is a great rating. And our max of uh, 99.85 is still, you know, without a doubt possible. It's not a 100 100, but that is a very, very high rating. So I can see us getting, you know, just a massive massive bump in uh in sponsor payout for next season that's going to do it for this episode though i'm the Cathlon gamer like comment subscribe and i'll see you next time have a good one be safe out there bye for now